Welcome friends to another r slash pro revenge video. If you want to help me in getting revenge against the dastardly YouTube algorithm, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our first story of the day is by Scud000, Parking Petty Revenge. I ordered to pick up at my local grocery store, which is designated parking for pickup orders. Someone who seemed to have a regular order decided to double park in the last two pickup spots remaining. Luckily, there was an opening just opposite of those two spots, so I parked there in the meantime, while waiting for a worker to be available. Eventually, after a worker finished filling up another customer's car, I notified them that, hey, I'm parked here close by, as there's nothing else available. But since I wasn't in a designated spot, I seemed to perhaps get a lower priority than those linked to a designated numbered spot, so I had to wait much longer. After enough time, the person who double parked, taking the last two designated spots, came out of the store with their groceries and loaded up the car. As they prepared to leave, I decided, why not have a little petty revenge to make them slightly inconvenienced? As they started their car, I decided to take out my phone and pretend to be busy with it while standing in a position that would prevent them from backing out of the parking spot. Not too close to the car, but not too far either, but also with my back slightly turned more towards their vehicle, so it would seem that I'm just oblivious to the vehicle, and perhaps would continue walking any moment after looking at my phone. This went on for about 15 to 30 seconds when, then, I got a new lucky break. The grocery worker came to deliver my items, so I stopped the grocery worker kind of in the middle of the parking lane, still with our backs turned to the vehicle wanting to back out, and started to try to use my phone to verify the grocery items being delivered. Then after another 15 to 30 seconds, when the worker noticed the reverse lights as the car tried to back out very slowly, the worker started moving the car out of the way, as I pretend to be oblivious for a little while longer to extend this petty revenge as long as possible. I think just about everybody hates a double line parker. Considering this guy took up two pickup spots, do you think the couple minutes OP made them wait at the very end was enough revenge? Or was this light duty for this filthy double parker? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Our next story is by EGY718. Neighbor got revenge on me and my family by walking in our yard. Growing up, my parents' backyard connected and shared a fence with three neighbors, next door, directly behind, and diagonally. I had friends who lived diagonally to us, so to get to their houses, I would hop the fence and take maybe five steps in the corner of the neighbor's yard directly behind us. I was probably 11 or 12 at the time, and my parents didn't see a major issue with it since the property had about a half acre between the fence and their house. In hindsight, and now as a homeowner, I'd be super annoyed that a kid was doing this on my property without asking, and I'd probably talk to the neighbor about it to give permission first, but that's not what happened. After doing this a few times over the course of a month or two, I looked out the window one morning and saw the neighbor who lived behind my parents walking straight through our backyard. By the time I told my dad, she was at our gate and went through it to our front yard. My dad confronted her and asked what the heck she was doing and sarcastically said, I'm just visiting my friend. This is a shortcut. So petty and weird. I respect her for it. But she moved shortly after and was accused of poisoning another neighbor's dog, so I'll just stick with petty and weird. Well, that story sure took a turn there at the end, didn't it? It was all fine and dandy until the neighbor's revelation about poisoning a neighbor's dog came up. Considering everything, I think it's a fair enough revenge and nobody was hurt. But if that dog story's true, I'm glad they moved away from OP so OP didn't have to be around that person. Our next story is by Bootleg Moon. Wrongfully ticket my car and deny my appeal that has clear video evidence? I'll help block your future cash grabs. So, my car was recently ticketed $60 for parking in a certain area during street cleaning hours. Thing is, there was no sign anywhere near my vehicle. Naturally, I appealed the ticket online and included video and photo evidence. Well, my appeal was denied, and when I reached out to ask why, they basically told me to kick rocks. They did welcome me to make an in-person visit to get a court date, which I'm sorely tempted to do on principle, but would be a waste of time and potentially cost me another $70 on top of the $60 citation if the judge goes along with their little racket. So, I have a better idea. Before the next street cleaning hours on that street, I'll personally go around and leave individual notes on people's cars reminding them to move and not let the city take them for a $60 ride. As a bonus, I'll include a giant title, something along the lines of 
don't let city names corrupt parking administration steal your money. I love that OP went on to clarify that the street cleaners rarely come out to where OP's at, and if or when they do, it's after those cleaning hours that they claim are posted. It literally is just like some kind of racket, like these people going around getting satisfaction out of saying to random people, you're wrong, pay up $60, you're wrong, that'll be 60 bucks. They must have some kind of BS rule where like maybe once a year they send a letter or there's a sign within certain amount of feet from where you parked so therefore that counts as posted signage. If OP had more time and money, I wish they would have taken it to court, just the principle alone. Our next story is by Duchess of Cheez-It, Accidental Petty Revenge. Several years ago, our neighbors had two small dogs, they just let them outside to do their business. As none of us had fences, they were all over the place. I'd flung many a poo back in their yard, may or may not have been basement window wells. They didn't get the hint. Anyway, I'd been trying to establish a pivot hedge, but the rabbits kept chewing on them. I'd been periodically treating them with a spray called liquid fence to deter them. For those unfamiliar, the stench of the stuff is unfathomable. It's like rotten eggs with garlic and butt. Nasty stuff. So one morning, I was spraying the hedge. Neighbor lets the dogs out who come running my way. The neighbor sees what I'm doing and yells, no, at the dogs, but too late. They both were running through the hedge and must have smelled amazing to them. They were rubbing up on it. I was stifling a laugh and had to go to the other side of the yard because I was going to lose it. She rounds them up and two hours later, she's draped about eight different area rugs on her deck rail to dry. Apparently, they went inside and rolled around. I'm glad to say that shortly thereafter, they installed a fence. Thanks Naughty Dogs for exacting my revenge without me having to lift a finger. Listen, I don't know what it is, but if there is something that smells like the stench of the earth, for some reason dogs are like, that's what I want to smell like, that's what I want to roll around in. My odor will be completely masked with that. In past years I've been around relatives with dogs, walking their dogs near forested areas. And sometimes in those foresty areas, there's some animals and inevitably some die and some really smell. You can't believe how bad the dogs want to go investigate whatever that awful stench is. Imagine your dog getting off the leash and they beeline for it. I'd be screaming internally and externally. This next story is by I Smile, You Smile Forever. I made a jerk at my work holding her pee for hours. I work in janitorial at a factory, and unfortunately this means that people tend to be jerks because they see me as someone below them. Well, I take pride in doing my job well, and my bosses say I'm one of their best. For the last few months though, some lady, let's call her Jane, at the factory I clean for keeps complaining about every little thing to my bosses, whether it be true or not. Well, recently she's been lying to my bosses and saying I don't ever clean the ladies room. Despite the fact that literally anyone could tell that I have since it'd be disgusting otherwise. I know the factory doesn't allow restroom breaks very often, so I always let the women use the bathroom even if I'm actively cleaning it to be nice. I mean, who wants to hold their pee for several hours? Well, because Jane complained enough, a new rule was put in place that means I now can't let anyone into the bathroom as I clean it until I finished. Jane is notorious for overusing her time in the bathroom to skip out on work, so needless to say, there's been a few times she started leaving her area to use the bathroom. Given how thoughtful Jane's been about making sure I do my job properly, I've taken to making sure to always be cleaning the ladies room in break room whenever she needs it. The first time was the best, so let me share that with you. I came out of the bathroom that I'm cleaning to grab some more of my supplies, only to find Jane there waiting. Jane's frowning like usual. Hey, could I use the bathroom? I really have to go. And the other bathroom's under maintenance right now. I put on my best fake apologetic smile and shake my head. I'm sorry, but I can't let anyone into the bathroom until I'm fully finished cleaning it. I'd say you could wait, but I wouldn't want you to get into trouble for standing around doing nothing. Jane scowled at me. It won't take long. Can't you just move the sign for now? Once again, I shake my head as I gather up the supplies I need. No can do. I have a schedule to stick to and can't go against company rules. I wouldn't want anyone to think I'm not doing my job correctly after all. Jane was getting pissed at this point, but 
I couldn't care less. I pushed open the bathroom room and gave her one more oh-so-apologetic smile before heading in. I'll try and hurry so you can use it soon, but there's only so much I can do. Sorry, Jane. Then I went into the bathroom and took the longest time I could to clean it. By the time I came out again, Jane was gone and I couldn't have felt happier. I knew she'd have to wait who knows how long until their next bathroom break, and the thought of that makes me grin so much. I still do it whenever I can, and there is absolutely nothing she can do in retaliation either, besides give me the stink eye. I swear Opie's laughing now, but if they keep doing this, they're gonna walk back out of that bathroom one day, and they're gonna find out Jane left a present for them just right on the floor. Because of how Jane's treating you, I do think it's a good revenge, but it's not something you should do over and over and over because the times they do have to legitimately use the bathroom, it's just not good in general to be restricting them from being able to access that. I think once, maybe twice is good, but it's not really great to continue to intentionally be a detriment to their health. And our final story of the day is by Evil Tessmacher, the results of my yard work. First, let me say that I'm not 100% certain this is pro-revenge because I don't necessarily think of myself in that league. I live in a consolidated county. That means that the city and county governments merged some years back, ostensibly to reduce administrative and infrastructure costs. This is important because services like fire, police, utilities, and trash pickup are now managed by former county officials and not the city officials. Many of these services are also much more inefficient, and some services have been outsourced to private companies. My municipality outsourced trash and yard waste pickup a few years ago, and the two companies who now do those collections are woefully inadequate, and their services cost more than when the city or county did it. They both have similar sets of rules of what can be put out for collection, take fewer types of waste away, and no longer come two days a week as the city once did, but now only come one day a week. We're all paying more money for less service. Now that the background's done, here's the story. I did some yard work over the course of a couple of weekends last summer, cutting some limbs, trimming some shrubbery, and cutting down a dead tree in my backyard. Knowing what the rules are for how much yard waste, limbs, leaves, and such can be put out, I bagged everything that was supposed to be bagged, filling up three of them. Things like leaves and small clippings, weeds and such. The paper bags for yard waste from the big box home improvement stores are what they require, so I use those. I just fill them halfway up so they're not too heavy for the waste collectors, even though there were no written weight restrictions. However, if a bag is too full, they'll knock it over to spill out the contents so they then don't have to pick it up. I cut the larger limbs down to under 4 feet in length or they wouldn't be picked up. Anything at all they can do to get out of picking something up, they will do. And they almost always leave a horrendous mess behind when they do pick things up. The pile put out for collection is not allowed to be any wider than 10 feet nor any deeper or higher than 5 feet, nor may it contain any piece longer than 4 feet. All bags must be placed in a row, no more than 3 feet away from the limb pile. My pile was maybe 4 inches longer than 10 feet, and only because of the tiny ends of the limbs, smaller than a toothpick, hanging out of the pile. The pile was no higher than 3 feet and no deeper than 4 feet. In other words, it fell within the size limits, except for a few twigs with leaves. I also had the three bags, each about half full of clippings and leaves, all lined up exactly as required and about two feet away from the main pile. They were scheduled to come on a Tuesday, but when I got home from work that afternoon, it was all still there. There was a pre-printed notice on my door that my pickup exceeded the prescribed size limits, and the note said I would be required to either pay a $250 oversized load fee or reduce the size of the pile by half to make it fit into the limit. This is where the revenge comes in. I had the next two days off, so the next morning, bright and early, I got out the head trimmers. I trimmed the ends of the pile back to exactly 9 feet in length. After carefully laying those trimmed bits on top of the pile, I went to the backyard where the limbs I had not trimmed the week before were stacked for the following week's pile and found four long, fairly straight limbs. I removed all the smaller limbs and leaves from these limbs, ending up with four moderately straight poles, each about seven feet long. I marked one foot intervals on each pole in fluorescent orange paint and stuck them in the ground, out at the curb in the front yard, at the corners of a rectangle exactly five feet wide and 10 feet long. Got out the surveyor's tape, 
bright pink plastic tape used to mark property corners, and tied it onto and around the stakes at the height of 5 feet. This established a visual outline of the volume I was required to stay within. I made absolutely sure that everything in the pile was completely inside the poles and below 5 feet in height. This required adding almost two-thirds of the remaining pile in the backyard to the stack out front to bring it up to 4 feet 6 inches in width, 4 feet 6 inches in depth, and 9 feet 6 inches in length, and no piece longer than 46 inches. The pile was almost twice as much material as before. This included some small logs up to 4 inches in diameter and also 46 inches long. The limit is 5 inches diameter, all within the limits of 5 feet by 5 feet by 10 feet the waste company mandates. I carried each of the three bags of clippings to the backyard and filled each of them up as much as possible while still being able to fold over the tops and staple shut each bag. I also included small 8 inch to 10 inch sections of the ends of larger limbs for added weight. The bags were now completely filled and weighed more than twice what they had before. I had to use the hand truck to get them out to the curb, they were so heavy. Oh, and all the extra clippings I generated filled up two more bags, so the total was now five bags, the company limit. I then went inside, called the company, and very nicely asked that they come pick up my yard waste since they had not done so on Tuesday. They agreed to send out a truck and crew and told me I would have to pay the fee. Come on then, I told them. They soon arrived and happened to be the same crew that normally comes to my neighborhood. I pulled a 25-foot Stanley tape measure from my pocket and asked them to measure the poles to confirm that the space was within the required limits. They did so and agreed the pile was not oversized and proceeded to spend the next two hours manually loading it all under their truck. Oh, and it took both of them to manhandle each of those bags into the back of the truck too. I told them, very nicely and with a smile, that I knew what 10 feet was, pointed to a fence where it was marked with orange electrical tape, and thanked them for coming to pick up my yard waste. The two tired, sweaty waste disposal guys just groaned, got in their truck, and drove off. There was no extra added fee to my bill for that month, Never has been since. Now, I know that they got paid for their time, and I know that I had to do a lot of extra work on my day off, but since last July, I've not once ever had them leave so much as a single leaf on the ground in front of my house. They had to actually do some hard work, with me standing there in shorts, smiling and drinking cold Gatorade while they were sweating. I definitely think OP made their point. I kind of do feel bad for the garbage truck guys though, because... While I think the limit actually is understandable, the amount of time they'd spend loading that one spot up, they'd probably get some kind of big reprimanding from their higher ups for taking so long in their route. To be fair, they could just be being lazy and not wanting to pick up that much stuff, but they also might just have a lot of pressure being placed upon them to go as fast as they can get it done as early as they can and efficient and stuff. Either way though, OP definitely solved their problem. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.